Good morning, Pantsers. It's week 42, and naturally I wanted to do some kind of life, the universe, and everything themed video. That's a pretty broad theme, though. Hard to fit into four minutes. Not that this is likely to be four minutes. I've been thinking about this video for the last week and trying to decide what to talk about, and during that week I've also been catching up on the last few Vlogbrothers videos, and through Hank's we're all scared video. I also saw Charlie McDonald's I'm scared video and some of the responses that people have posted to it. And then I finished my Vlogbrothers backlog and started on my Zay Frank backlog. And when I finished that, I found that I was thinking a lot about authenticity and vulnerability. The common thread in most of the videos I watched this week, regardless of their topic or content, was that the vloggers let the viewer see them in all their scary human weirdness. They didn't just talk about feeling scared or sad or anxious or joyful or excited or hopeful, they they let us see it in them and feel it with them. They made a gift for their audience of their vulnerability. I think that's so extraordinary. It's what makes their videos so compelling and I think it's what makes us great as artists and as human beings. And I think it's how we connect with other people. But I'm really bad at it. I can remember one video I made for this channel where I talked about being insecure and awkward and anxious and how ashamed I was of myself for being all those things and how being ashamed just made it worse. And I remember that even at the time I was so unhappy with the way that video turned out because it didn't feel like it meant anything. I tried really hard but it didn't feel as if I had done a good job being open and honest and authentic. It just felt like I was talking. And I think that's because I was. I was talking about being vulnerable rather than being vulnerable. Because as hard as I tried and as much as I wanted to, I I didn't know how, and I think I still don't know how, to do that. To let people in and let them see inside like that. For two reasons. One, because it's just really, really scary. And two, because there's a very fine line between being vulnerable and honest and being overwhelming. And I am very reluctant to cross that line. Like, have you ever had someone just sort of dump all their emotions on you? like? start telling you about their problems and all these personal details about their life and you're just like, wow, that's um, wow, okay, I don't know what to do with that. And it's strange because we look for openness and vulnerability and authenticity in art, you know, in books and movies and in things like vlogs and blogs and people's personal expressions. But it's not as simple as the difference between our response to art and our response to real life because I've also had conversations with people in which they opened up and told me personal things and let me in in a way that wasn't overwhelming or awkward but was brave and moving. And I'm trying to pinpoint what the difference is, whether it's merely a question of performance, of being able to gauge your storytelling basically. Like is it the same thing? Is it just picking and choosing what bits of yourself to show and how to present them to your audience in a way that makes them feel like they're being shown some important part of you and being given some new level of intimacy with you without feeling overwhelmed by it? That sounds really calculating and cynical and manipulative and not authentic at all. And I'm sure there's an element of truth to it. Because I mean, after all, you can edit a video or a blog post in a way that you can't edit a conversation. But I think that's a really lazy interpretation because it is and must be more complicated than that. The truth resists simplicity, as we know. And then I wonder too if it has to do with not asking anything of your audience. Because when I think back on the uncomfortable situations I've been in, they were mostly situations where I ended up feeling like the person wanted something from me, wanted me to do something, wanted me to save them or fix them or love them. Not because they wanted it from me specifically, but because they needed it from somebody. And it was that really painful neediness and my own feeling of inadequacy that made it so uncomfortable. And I think the vlogs, for instance, that are the most moving are often the ones in which the person presents their feelings in an, an unadorned, simple way and just leaves them there for us to look at. You know, this is how I feel. But I don't know if that's it either. I mean, that implies that the vlog exists in a sort of vacuum or void without any real intent of communication. And the communication is the whole point. The communication is what makes it moving and compelling and interesting and important. 
And it's usually at this point in my thought processes on the subject that I start getting caught up in thought loops and labyrinths in my head and wandering foggily around from tangent to tangent without ever making any real progress. Because I don't know what makes authentic vulnerable communication work or not work. I don't know how to do it and it really bothers me because I live inside this shell all the time, behind this wall that I can't seem to break through. It's very Pink Floyd. And I want very much to be able to reach out and connect with people because it seems to me so important. Ages ago in one of the Brotherhood 2.0 videos, John famously said, a lot of life is about doing things that don't suck with people who don't suck. And it really resonated with me as it did with a lot of other people. Friendships and connections with and interactions with other people are, you know, some of the most important things in life. And I think it's implied that you have to do those things with integrity and authenticity and that you have to let those people in or it doesn't work. So when I want to do this big scary thing and let people see the parts of my heart and my mind that I normally keep out of view, and then I can't seem to make it work correctly, it's both terrifying and frustrating. And sometimes it feels like it's actually counterproductive, like trying and failing makes the wall thicker instead of tearing it down, you know, makes me feel more disconnected. So when I watch people vlogging in a way that opens them up, and lets other people in. I admire them, but I also find myself studying them, trying to catch the trick, trying to figure out how they do it and make it work. There's no conclusion to this video because I don't have any answer or any knowledge or any particular insight. It's just a bunch of stuff that was in my head and I wanted to put it outside my head to share with you guys because I love you and I have to trust that you love me too and that you care what's in my head. And for right now, I'm going to hope that that's the key to making it work.